I am very bullish about it. All I can say is that I am very bullish both about India and RR's capabilities. Uh, and, and I should say RR's initiatives mm. because it takes two to tango. And I think us as a company, the UK as a government, mm. and India as a government, and the three coming together brings the capabilities for us to do more here in India. And I think the stars are lining up. So <laughs> I think it's a good sign. Okay. When you look today, we are at what, what, 200 million passengers a year, mm -hmm. and it's expected to easily go up to 450, 500 million passengers. So I see the sector is still in the early stages. I see there's a lot more happening. It's going to be more of international travel. Mm -hmm. And more importantly, after COVID times, people are traveling. And today I was observing that the, all the airlines are full, filled, all the trains are filled. Mm -hmm. It seems like people don't want to stay in their houses anymore. They really have wheels in their feet and they want to go somewhere all the time. So this is tourism, this is business, this is just casual. Anything you look at it, people are traveling. That's the first sign. When people travel, they want to get there faster. That's the next sign. So aviation is here to stay. Well, RR has been in India since 1932 with the Tata Mail aircraft. And then we were at the Indian Air Force in the Indian Navy. 1956, our partnership happened with HAL. So when you look at our journey, we have sold engines, we have partnered in India, mm -hmm. and then as we went along, we built our engineering services around 2005. And then we have not looked back since then. We looked at the operation side and we leveraged the capacities in India, then understood the capabilities that existed in India and started building out on them. So making India was the best opportunity at the time. Now, when you are going to just buy from overseas, mm -hmm. it is one thing. But if you are able to buy these large defense projects mm -hmm. and you are able to make them in India, then what happens? You, in principle, have not just created employment, you create the security of sorts for your defense equipment. Right? And now you translate that into the other areas pharma, food and beverage. And then you keep looking at it, manufacturing becomes a very large portion of the economy. Mm -hmm. It gives security in all different areas. And at the end of the day, it was an initiative, a vision, a clarion call by the Prime Minister then. We have evolved since then. Because we have said, yes, making India is great for us, but we need to do more in India, which is where your Atmanil Bharat comes from. Mm -hmm. To be honest, I think uh, the Air India deal was a significant deal. It is a significant milestone. Mm -hmm. And I think with the 1932 Tata Mail, mm -hmm. for us to come to this Air India mm -hmm. you know, deal here, it's a full circle. Yeah. It's almost coming home, and it's with the white body aircraft, yeah. uh, the the uh, the Airbus three fifty one thousand and the three fifty nine hundred, yeah. which are really beautiful products. Yeah. And by beauty, it's not from an artistic sense, but in terms of technology as well. They are cutting edge technology. In fact, our engines with Air India, they will be fifty percent SAF compatible yeah. from day one. So not only are these engines just engines yeah. uh, carrying people from point A to point B, yeah. they carry them. Right? Much more greener. Well, post COVID, I think everybody has had challenges with supply chain. It's a global uh, challenge. Mm -hmm. And we continue to work with the global challenge, right? And we look at uh, how can India participate with us in those efforts. Mm -hmm. And for us, whether there's been a supply chain challenge or not, mm -hmm. the way to look at India is a very long term proposition. Mm -hmm. It is not something, India is not something you come in when you've got a challenge elsewhere in the world. I like to look and say, Rolls-Royce has looked at India and said, India is my partner for the rest of my life. We have had this relationship with HEL since 1956, mm -hmm. right? And when we do something in India, it's always for a very, very long term. Our door engines, you know, power the combat aircraft in India. Mm -hmm. And they've been going on for the last 30 years. And they'll continue on for a sizable time to come in the future. Right? So these products are very hard to design. But once designed, they go for a very long time. And so with our partner HEL, we are able to support the Air Force. Mm -hmm. So in my view, I don't want to look at it and say, oh, there's a crisis in the world, so I think you are going to India. We look and say, India has got these capabilities, India has got these capacities, and we are here mm -hmm. to leverage India for India mm -hmm. and leverage India for the world.
there is a couple of things to that question. Right? We signed up to the net zero charter of the UN by 2050. So we signed up to it as a we will partake. Which means all our facilities, all our products, all our services will be net zero by 2050. But it's a journey. But no journey there, if we can sign up to something. But if you're not showing along the way what you're doing with it, it means nothing. So what you've done with that is we've gone in and said our existing products, right, and our new products. How are we going to handle them? And in terms of the new products, we have said by 2030, everything will be all uh, net zero. Or a safe compatible, 100%. The regulation today says 50% compatibility is enough, but we got 100% capability there, right? But 50% capability. And now with the existing products, we're going in there and saying that now we got to retrofit all of them so that they are also 50% SAF compatible by regulation. And they, when you go to 50%, you can also test the rest of the way. So we'll do that. And that for us already the Air India campaign that we have had, I think in there, in principle, all the agents that are there, right now the Air India, are 50% SAF compatible. So from day one, we are able to achieve that. Our facilities now. Now we have to look at the facilities, we have to look at the services. When you say net zero by 2050, it's got to be everything. Yeah. Those things we are saying, we'll work towards getting them ready by 2030. Right? So this is one side of the picture where there's more of an evolution. Then you got the revolution side, right? A disruptive side. Which is like, I'll eliminate all of these fossil fuels, you know, uh, powered aircraft. And I'll go all electric. Right. So now when you're going all electric, then you start looking at things like green hydrogen because if you say all electric and the batteries are charged mm -hmm. using coal mm -hmm. uh, for power generation, mm -hmm. it means nothing. Mm -hmm. So we basically said we can look at green hydrogen, we got to look at how the batteries are going to work, we got to look at how this aircraft will fly. So we created an aircraft and we said let's do a test run, let's do a prototype and let's check it out. And so that aircraft in the first trial was a success. And now we are able to say that, okay, now we take it up and we got to go longer distances, we got to go faster, we got to put more payload into it. So all these things start coming up. But that's a different journey altogether. So you got two efforts. One is minimize the carbon emissions today or control it as much as you can. The other is eliminate those in a different way. So there are two paths we take. Then you have the electrical, uh, you know, the EV tolls, electric vertical takeoff and landing. Now these are like for smaller, so there's a transport system that's evolving where you can have like five passenger helicopters that in principle can act as air caps. And so the air taxi service, if it comes up, we have our EV tolls that we are working with many companies globally. Right? And so that's again, that's going to be a much faster entry. But then this is airspace, this is a very different kind of a regulatory environment. So we have to work with a lot of people in government, the academia, the industry. In order to make sure these all become products for commercial use. Right? So the journey is all for us, but it's a long journey. It's a long journey. It's a different journey, but it is going to be there. Every single country at every single point in time adds value by the fact their GDP is growing, their needs are changing. And their requirement for products and services, you know, that come up, include us. Yeah. It is not how important is, you know, India for RR. Yeah. It is also the question of how important is RR for India. From an India point of view, look, we are a team that supports our local businesses. We make sure that we are there alongside them when we create new products or new technologies. We are with them in analyzing the data, in creating the tools that is required to make sure that the existing products and the existing fleet flies safely, reliably and efficiently on the aerospace side, mm -hmm. perform safely, reliably and efficiently on the power generation side, right? So in principle, we have our engineering team supporting all the three businesses, we have our digital team supporting all the three businesses, we have the joint ventures here exporting products for global usage and we are providing the local employment and leveraging the local capabilities. So it is a very integral part and it is not a question of what is the percentage of this or that. It is a question of how integral you are and how important you are. And that I can say we are very important and we are very integral. And then our force motors joint venture, which because of COVID times, we struggled to bring it out. Now it is all performing. We actually make about 1,000 engines a year there. So I think that is also moved forward. Joint ventures are doing very well. Digital team is doing very well. Now engineering teams, we have about 2,500 people through our partners with TCS, l &D, you know, and others, Infosys. Mm -hmm. And so we are able to continue to 
provide that support. From a support execution point of view with the Air Force, we make sure our engines are flying without getting grounded. And we make sure that with the Navy, with the uh, Army, our products are supported capably. So there's a lot of areas that RR can leverage India. There are a lot of products and services that RR offers that India can leverage. And I think that is what we would like to do as we go forward, hand in hand, in the future.